Most of my working life, I've pursued social progress through designing and advocating public policy. The many failures and occasional successes along the way have led me to a conclusion. In pursuing progress through policy, we should be both more sceptical and also more ambitious. Also, there's something now that makes this conversation urgent. I believe today's RSA could help bring about a concrete change more significant than any I've pursued before, the introduction of a universal basic income. To fully grasp that opportunity, we must understand the work that policy can do for us, but also acknowledge when policy alone is unlikely to do the job. So a bit of reminiscing. Across my career, I've approached social change from many angles. At the local level, as a county councillor, as the director of a campaign and advocacy organisation. I was, for a brief time, an unsuccessful academic, emphasising conceptual clarity rather than developing solutions. I worked for a political party. There, the assumption was that as long as our people got into power, then everything would be fine, progress would be guaranteed. I ran the think tank, IPPR. We thought that rigorous analysis and the pragmatic development of policy options would surely lay the path to progress. I worked as a Downing Street advisor where that faith in robust policy was combined with the imperative of holding on to power and coping with the constantly shifting demands made by events. Then I came here to the RSA. Over the last 10 years, we've gradually reformed the society in the pursuit of greater distinctiveness and greater impact. We've had to be clear about our mission and focus, our ambition, our reach. Most of all, more, we've been more active in recruiting and supporting fellows as change makers. And if you're a fellow of the RSA, thank you. Our evolving RSA methodology has reflected and reinforced a growing doubt about what I have called in the past the policy presumption. By this, I mean an assumption amongst ministers, civil servants, policy advisors, but equally all of us, and it really is all of us, who from time to time urge them to act. The assumption that, on the whole, the most effective way to accomplish social change is to pull the big levers of central government policy. Legislation, tax and spend, and earmarked funding streams. Now, there's an obvious problem with this view. Big policy is hard to get right. Very hard. From any perspective, the recent record of central government policy isn't great. There are the well-known disasters like the poll tax, the child support agency, rail privatisation. Universal credit is busily in the process of joining that inglorious list. Then there's the underwhelming impact of 35 years of continuous reform of public services. There have been hundreds of pieces of legislation, thousands of targets. Yet, had we simply devolved control of education, health, policing and other public services to cities and regions and let them get on with it, with just a limited power of central intervention when things went wrong, would public services really today be in a worse position? And yet, despite all this policy activity, we're living with the failure to tackle major problems, social inequality, lack of mobility, what Theresa May was talking about last week, the economic marginalization of many areas outside the southeast, stagnant living standards, the scale of unmet care needs, low productivity, an economy still deeply dependent on debt. Now, each policy failure has its own causes, but there are underlying factors at work too. The growing complexity and pace of change in the world mean that policy is made against a shifting and unpredictable landscape. Globalisation not only generates new tough problems, but it can make it harder for governments to act effectively alone. The public, you, are more diverse, more reactive, less inclined to trust and compliance. Policymakers have to deal with what Helen Margetts and her colleagues recently termed the chaotic pluralism of politics in an age of social media. True. There are some new tools in the policymakers' kit bag, like big data, better research methods, and the use of more sophisticated behavioural techniques. But taken as a whole, the harsh reality is that policy aiming for significant social change faces an ever harder task in the future. Which leads me to my apparent paradox. On the one hand, I believe that we should be more sceptical about attempts to achieve specific social outcomes primarily through policy intervention. There are limits, tightening limits, to the work that policy alone can do. On the other hand, in the areas that matter most, our ambition should be to create a new social equilibrium, using policy as one weapon in our armory. If our goal is irre an irreversible ordering of the social landscape, our method must be many-sided, subtle, 
patient and opportunistic. We live in disorienting and challenging times. The world of science and technology brings news almost every day of remarkable inventions and possibilities. Yet these amazing opportunities are not matched by our faith in a better future. Progressives, whether of the left, right or center, cannot win unless citizens have a tangible and personal sense of what progress might mean for them. It can become a symbol of a renewed belief in the possibility of major advances in the way we live, the way we treat each other, and what we expect from life. I've come on a journey in my thinking about change. Experience has chastened me. I still think policy can change the world, but only when it is part of a bigger shift and when it is shrewdly designed to channel and accelerate a wider civic momentum. Ultimately, the case is not just for a new policy created by government, but for a new society created by us all. <laughs>